everyone, I'm DZ Maldonado with The Nocturnal, and today I'll be speaking to Jake D. Austin. Hi, how are you? Hey, what's up? How are you? Very good. Thanks for having me. Of course. So what have you been up to during lockdown? Uh, yes, lockdown. Is, it's so hard to believe that it's been over six months since COVID has, um, you know, set everything off into this crazy chain of events. Just want to send good vibes to you, Nocturnal, and everyone else watching this video. I hope you guys are staying well and safe but also striving and growing with life in general, you know? Lockdown has been like a, kind of like a light switch turning on and off, and the off happened literally so quickly, it sent so many people scrambling. Um, so, you know, I've just been trying to stay low key, going to the grocery store, cooking at home, uh, getting out for some outdoor dining when I can. Of course, I miss going to the movies and being able to interact with people in general, but fortunately I've been able to continue to have meetings and um, discuss future projects. Yeah, definitely. And from Go Diego Go to Hotel for Dogs and of course Disney Channel, which we'll talk a little bit more about, um, what was it like being a kid and growing up in the world of showbiz? Well, I did most of my education on sets. Uh, so there would be a room that looked exactly like a classroom that child actors would be in there typically with other tutors. And usually you were with other kids your age. So it was sort of like a different normal, I guess you could say. Um, my family was always really supportive to me. I didn't really miss out on anything that any other kid would uh, experience growing up because I was just doing what I loved. That was my passion. Um, just like an athlete or a student would practice football after class, this was sort of like the same thing, but it would be shooting and, you know, taking classes here and there for acting. Uh, I didn't really get a chance to go to prom, but for example, I was fortunate enough to be nominated for a Teen Choice Award a few times. So that's sort of like going to prom if you think about it. Even better, honestly, in my opinion. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess some things, you know, some things are a blessing. Some things you just got to take, take with the curse, you know. Exactly. And, of course, with Disney+, Plus, people are re-watching Wizards of Waverly Place like crazy. I actually just got done, like, binge-watching the entire show. That's oh, really? Like, that, thank you. That's love right there. Thank you. You just made my whole day. I'm no, glad you were able to check it out. I loved it. It's honestly, in my opinion, it's the best Disney show. I'm just going to put that out there. I truly believe oh, it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. You're hyping it up way too much, but thank you. <laughs> no, what was your best memory on the show? Oh, well, Max actually wasn't originally a part of the show. That's like a fun fact that most fans don't, know, don't really know, but originally it was only two siblings, and I went in and auditioned for a different character, and they liked the idea of having three kids, so that's really how Max joined the family. Um, I don't think in particular I have a singular like best memory that stands out. I just remember um, the whole set feeling like a real family and that was the best thing about the show. That and the fact that people to this day tell me how much it meant to them and how faithfully they watch the show as they grow up and watch it on different streaming sites. Wizards has reached a whole new generation of people so in a way I guess you could say that's kind of magical. Good point. <laughs> and with people re-watching the show, it's kind of started this debate online about the finale. You know, in the end, Alex becomes a family wizard, uh, Justin becomes the head of WizTech, and Max gets the substation. I'm curious to see if you've heard of this before, because people truly think Max got the short end of the stick, and what your thoughts are on it. Oh, and you know what? No, I actually haven't heard that before, but I mean, speaking for Max personally, <laughs> I guess I could say that I think it's pretty awesome that he's carrying the torch for the family business, keeping it alive, and also uh, staying with that entrepreneurial spirit. I think that's dope. Definitely, I agree. And as said before, you were actually in Diego Go and in Rio yeah. this week. Um, do you have a standout experience with your animated projects? Um, I love doing animation, and I especially love doing different voices and accents and impressions, things like that. That's how I. That's how I fell in love with acting. Um, but an animated project is really similar to a live action one um, in the sense that you get the script, you audition, um, you know, I'm just speaking as an actor, you hope you get cast. And then in, it changes because there's really no screen tests or wardrobe fittings. Um, once, the, once the producers and once the, once the director decides who they want for each role, um, you go into a booth, you record all the dialogue, pretty much in either a day or um, over the course of several days, not really over the course of like a few months because the process just seems to come together so much, so much, um, so much more quickly. Um, and then you don't really get to see your character either. 
uh, or you, you don't really get to act with any of the other actors. Usually there'll be a stuffed animal or a toy character in the room, but it's pretty much just you there imagining, um, you know, the scene as it's playing out in front of you. So this shoot with the Nocturnals about summer nights, how is that vibe different from New York, which is where you're originally from, um, and LA? Shout out to the photographer, Kevin Roldan, who did a great job on the pictures. Um, actually, a bit of a funny fact, we actually had a different venue in mind, but they were at capacity, so we just happened on the place we did, and it worked out really well. In a way, that's what summer nights are about, you know, making plans, but then remaking, changing them, never really knowing where the night will lead. As far as the difference between LA and New York summer nights, of course, New York is warmer and humid. The city's more condensed. So you walk more places and you see people on the street passing, you know, by different storefronts or bars. And then in the Big Apple, things stay open later. Whereas in LA, last call at bars is at 2 a.m. So when it comes to being nocturnal, New York is more of an all-nighter, which I don't necessarily encourage anyone else to do. Right. Um, so I'm actually originally from LA. I moved to New York for school. I'm curious to see, you know, what you miss about New York and how that compares to LA. Oh, well, the two cities are actually so different. They're really like the brother-sister city, if, I guess, if you could call it that. Um, and they're really rivals in a lot of ways. You know, they're always competing over different trends and music and, you know, different um, things in pop culture. But I can't really pick which city I love more because I've really had so many memories and spent so much time growing as a person and, and on both coasts. So I, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm a New Yorker at heart. I'll always be a New Yorker but I do love the palm trees and the sun in LA. So it's a, hard, it's a hard choice for me to make. And in terms of your personal style, what's your daily style and how do you get ready before you hit a red carpet or a movie premiere? For daily, I'm definitely a jeans and a t-shirt guy. The weather in LA doesn't change that much. I wore a Lucky Brand for this shoot and their fits and quality are top notch. So I love them. It's always sunny in LA year round. So you really can't argue with that. And in the evening, it doesn't really get that cold. So you could throw on a denim jacket, which is what I did for this shoot, or a motorcycle jacket or a leather jacket in the winter. But the clothing from day to night is pretty easy. For the red carpets or for events, I love custom fit suits from Indochino. They're as good as it gets. And I also work with patterns and materials like faux suede that I love from ASOS. I like to keep things clean and fitted all the time and keep things simple. Great. And do you have a staple piece of clothing or a way you put together an outfit? Ooh, that's a great question. If I did, you know, put together an outfit, the one thing that stays consistent, the one thing that's always goes with me wherever I go are my personal sunglasses. They're dope. Do you have any like fashion icons or people that you look up to? Well, one of my fashion icons is Steve McQueen. I love um, his designs and his pieces in general. Um, my grandmother was a fashion designer and she definitely, you know, was a more, um, freelance artist and she she had a lot of her pieces in New York and she had her own store at one time and she's a very creative person and to this day still designs dresses and clothes for a lot of a lot of people that we know and so she's one of my favorite designers and artists as well but I'm biased because it's my grandma. Of course of course how could you not be um and in terms of movie premieres you actually have a new right. movie to release called Adverse can you tell us more about that? Yes, I have a film called Adverse, uh, which stars Mickey Bork, which tells a story about addiction and set in Los Angeles. And basically it's about a rideshare driver and a faithful night in LA that involves narcotics and more dramatic stuff. But I'm really excited for people to see it, of course. Due to COVID, movie theaters have been closed, but I recently heard that the release date is back in discussion. So I'm looking forward to that. And people can follow me on Instagram for more details for when it will be available. Sounds great. And in terms of movies, is there anything that you've been like binge watching right now or any movies that you've seen recently that you want to give a shout out to? Oh, there's so much stuff. I really haven't watched so much Netflix in my entire life since this all COVID started. Um, a lot of like non-scripted stuff I've been watching, to b believe it or not. Like for the first time, I'm, for the first time ever, I'm actually watching like reality stuff and non-scripted shows. So that's been pretty cool. So as we move out of COVID, what are things you're looking forward to doing in the future? Uh, I love working out. So my favorite gym is this place on La Brea called Plyo Fitness. They're awesome. Uh, they do small group and curated classes. And even during lockdown, they have outside training. So that's something that I'm doing and trying to stay active, keep myself busy with this lockdown. Physical fitness is really important for physical and mental and emotional health. 
Um, so the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, which is another great organ organization that I've been doing a lot of work with recently, um, they've been really, really strongly um, advocating for that mental health. And you can check out their website, bgca.org, to see how they've been helping kids, providing meals, and their, also their COVID response as well. Um, but I really haven't been able to travel much. And you know, being here in LA, I guess you could say Vegas is sort of drivable. So I definitely want to make it there to Caesars Palace, which is my favorite hotel in the Strip. Um, so if I can get out there for a weekend, uh, I guess I'll have a good time and maybe uh, be able to escape for a little bit. But I guess during this virus, it's important to just find ways to be creative and things to do when you're not drunk. Sounds great. I'm sure we're all looking forward to doing the exact same thing. Oh, yeah, I'm so sure. Likewise. Thank you so much for talking to us today. I really appreciate it and have a great rest of your day. My pleasure. You too. Thank you.